So I'm Ava Pipitone. I am she, and I am a transgender woman in Baltimore City, standing between you and your caffeine at Red Emma's, um, advocating in the Trans Alliance and founding Host Home. I grew up here on, in Baltimore, on, like, actually on a farm, not 20 minutes north of the city. It was like a really strange pocket of rural land, but I went to school in the city. There's the Baltimore uprising, and then there's a, a simultaneous uptick in violence in the trans community. There's the death of Mia Hall at the hands of police. Mia Henderson is killed, murdered, while working. And we have that trans uprising, Brianna Jenkins. She led it. Brianna and Monica, Monica Yorkman. They founded the Trans Alliance, and I was, you know, like the person that did all the tech and the social media. I didn't understand that I was being groomed, but I was very much being mentored by Brianna to fill her shoes. And when she went to law school, she was like, hey, Ava, you got this. <laughs> the most recent project would be Host Home. We're the first ever um, tech startup that's led by trans folks. So what Host Home is doing is quite literally poaching people off the waiting lists for emergency shelters and housing people immediately. You know, you call our 1-800 number, 1-833-HOST-ME-2, and a Lyft driver could pick you up and take you to one of our hosts in a matter of minutes. For a trans person, that's a lifeline. So in the chronology then, a couple years in Red Emma, is, that's a 13-year project. Everyone working at Red Emma's owns the project to which they sell their labor and engages in a process of direct democracy known as consensus in the ethos of Emma Goldman. Red Emma's came out of the ashes of Black Planet Books that was an info shop committed to uncensored information. And they were commenting on things like gender, race, class, monogamy, queerness before we talked about it as queerness. And Red Emma is with that politic of uh, non-hierarchy and allowing this technology of worker cooperatives to come in and intentionally check privilege. And uh, expanded that info shop and brought in a vegan cafe. I'm three years in, I'm a worker owner. So I was there, I think a couple different organizers from MFICO came through, or they were searching for more uh, uh, contributors to lead crowd sessions. I had heard a little bit about the social innovations um, that like Red Ball was trying to support, and I identified mentorship in this Amafico moment uh, as a good strategic use of the tools of Red Emma's and consensus. Just like people invested in me, I'm investing in others. And in both of my sections, there seemed to be um, a hunger for conversations around gender. I remember that at the end of the second one, there was some real vulnerability. People were sharing about like hierarchy of oppression, and at the end of it, someone, someone basically said that the, like, the things we're fighting for, the freedoms we're fighting for, are, um, are bound up in each other. Trans issues are not trans issues, they're cis people's issues, and cisgender people are hurting, and unfortunately that manifests in violence against trans bodies. So necessarily I have to kind of be communicating, be in conversation, be in mentorship, and be a mentee. So I offered to the group these, these, these strategies around consensus. And I submitted that we should act in solidarity with all these differences, knowing that we're on the same side. I'm really curious to see how Red Bull hears these conversations. What is the capacity of this this social enterprise to um, decentralize self and empower all of these movements. Unification happens so communication can happen and collective healing can happen. This is how you fight in 2017. You fight through media, you fight through art, you fight through calling in, you fight through building, um, and you fight through advocacy. Like, I don't really have time to try and argue with you to reach some kind of shared platform. I can't really move people's core beliefs. We don't have time. People are dying.